Hey, Business Building Warrior, this is your buddy, Jim. I've got a guest I'm going to interview today who actually works for someone that you've heard from on this show a few times. Today, we're going to talk to Mr. Richard Clough. He is, I think the official title is Warehouse Manager for Rich Potter. You've heard Rich and Shelly Potter on this show a handful of times. They're the ones who are just killing it with wholesale right now. They're actually the teachers behind our proven wholesale sourcing.com course. Well, Richard is on Rich's team. And we thought it would be an interesting kind of pull back the curtains a little bit and see the kind of people that we're hiring when we look to bring someone on board that helps us grow our business. I love the way that they met, the backstory, some of the great lessons. This is a guy who's fairly new to the business but he's really came up the chain quickly in his knowledge, his ability to contribute. Just a great young man. I found out later in the interview that he had just gotten married a short time ago. He's got a great work ethic, a great attitude, the kind of people you're looking for. We talk a little bit about managing virtual assistants today. That's part of what Richard does in his duty is he has a few Filipino, a couple of Filipino workers that they pay just a few dollars per hour, which again, remember that spends You got to multiply that by like eight to get the number of what that spins. So they're getting 15 to 20 bucks an hour equivalent for just a few dollars per hour, paying these great workers who help them go through and find opportunities. It's a brilliant way to grow your business. We spend some time on that and how they analyze products that they find when they get these big price lists from the new wholesale companies, what tools they're using. It's a really nice kind of pull back the curtains and look at the business. And I'm sure you're going to hear a few nuggets today on things that will inspire you to move forward and grow. Because remember, Rich and Shelly have a multiple million dollar business at this point, very profitable. I know they're taking extended vacations from time to time. They'll leave town for a week and just let the business continue running. They've built it very quickly using great guys on the team like Richard, who are left in charge and run the show. So this is a cool episode to kind of go through even if you're brand new. I think it'll be inspirational for you if you've been around a while and maybe you're you're just grinding, doing all the work yourself. There's some opportunity here for you to have a different perspective on what this business could and should be when you're selling online. So enjoy this episode with Mr. Richard Clough. So Richard, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Good to have you here. We arranged this in about 30 seconds flat, as I explained in the introduction. So I'm looking forward to get to know you along with the audience today. But tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's get to know you a little bit first. Sweet. Yeah, my name's Richard Clough. Um, I'm 24 years old, um, and I work for Richard Potter. Uh, I've been with him for about four plus years now. Um, we actually met at the gym. Um, I was actually working at the gym as a receptionist. And him and his wife, Shelly, were working out there. And he hired me to work with his event business um, initially. And that's how I got to know Rich and meet him um, and really get to be involved with him and his family. And then he started teaching me a little bit of his Amazon business, to which he then offered me a part-time position when he got his first warehouse. And then it's all just been uphill from there. Gotcha. Beautiful. So four years into this. (laughs) So I bet we can tap into some of the cool things you've learned along the way and being tied to Rich. And I explained who Rich is in the introduction. So, you know, we don't need to go into that a whole lot again, but, but what are some of the things you've learned and what are some of your duties uh, around the office? Let's just dive in. Like, you know, and, and here's who we're talking to today. I'm thinking the people who are kind of familiar with what we do around here, but they'd like to grow. They'd like to kind of be where Rich is instead of maybe something significantly smaller than that, or maybe they're new because Rich has, you know, I know he's in line to do like uh, several million dollars this year with a rapid uphill growth curve anticipated. Uh, So there's plenty of people who are thinking, man, I'd like to do more of that. What do you have for those folks? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing that I've noticed, especially working with Rich is I used to be just the single one employee working with him um, for a year. Um, mm-hmm. And that was based off me just being a bagger and a prepper, really getting all those, those products shipped into Amazon. Right. Um, and then we we decided to grow, um, in which we, we hired some more part-time help. We then eventually moved into, Rich kind of showed me how to find products, how to do a lot of sourcing, um, both replen and uh, wholesale sourcing. Um, and then I started to pick it up pretty fast. And so he kind of just transitioned to that was what he wanted me to do for the most part. And then we ended up hiring, you know, a replacement for me in the warehouse. 
And, and then we've slowly just started ramping up from then, but it seems as if building a team was the biggest thing to, to really increase our growth here with, with Rich and his business. Yeah, that makes total sense constantly replacing yourself. And so when he brought you on board, did he say, Hey, here's what it's going to look like over the next few years? Or did he just bring you on because he wanted some part-time work and sounded interesting? Yeah, no, at first it was before we even got our first warehouse, I was just coming up to his house and in his garage bagging and prepping some products, just more of a part-time job. Um, Mm -hmm. just, you know, ease a little bit of weight off their shoulders. Um, until we got to the point where he saw the potential of really, really ramping this business up and the potential and the growth of being this third-party Amazon seller. And so I know he posed a lot of ideas with me on how we can do that. But the first thing to do was get our own warehouse. Right. I got you. So you've kind of seen the team grow. Has there there been anybody, this is maybe an out of left field question, but I'm just curious. I don't know the answer to this actually, as much as I know about Richard's, uh, Richard's businessman, I just... I've never asked him, has there anybody he hired that just didn't work out that kind of came along and just didn't fit and kind of moved on? Yeah, we've, we've had a, had a few. Um, yeah. the, the biggest one I can think of was our initial buyer. Um, I know Rich was really wanting to buy or hire someone to be in charge of purchase orders for all these wholesale like uh, products and brands we had. And it just, it didn't seem to work out with the first hire that we had. And so that was, one of the the biggest hiccups was hiring someone, training them for about two months and then them not working out to where we had to replace them. Right. Yeah. Cause that's one of the challenges you you face. I think all of us face is letting go of some of these tasks and someone comes in they're new and they're not as good at it as we would have been. And you spend all that time. It can be very frustrating, but uh, so does everybody kind of start out the same level? With you guys, did, like the person who came in to do the POs, did they come in just for that gig or did they start off like bagging and prepping too? Or Yeah, so I think a lot of times with a lot of our bigger roles, if it be, you know, repricing or in charge of purchase orders or even warehouse management, um, I think it's more of a part-time, you mm-hmm. know, with our, our initial buyer, it was, we hired specifically for a buyer, but it was about 20 hours a week or so doing that. And the rest was going to be inside the warehouse to help prep and bag. Right. So kind of given the, the employees a little bit more familiar with multiple aspects of the business. Yeah, I think that's smart. I think for people are looking, you know, if you're wearing all these hats as the owner, why not hire people who are capable of wearing several hats as they find their specialization, but just kind of know the whole operation. It reminds me a little bit of the way, uh, I, I think it's in Japan, if you go into hotel management, which is a pretty serious degree in, the, in that culture, a uh, pretty high level education, they start you out cleaning toilets, right? Like oh, yeah. you're, you're going to head to an office job eventually. We don't care about your big fancy degree. You're cleaning toilets, cleaning bedrooms, you know, you're learning what it is to do the, the job at the base level. I think that's really smart rather than bringing in anybody who has an attitude of like, oh, I'm kind of too good to be touching plastic bags. You know, you yeah. want people who are willing to get their hands dirty when the time comes. I think it, it adds a lot of appreciation towards all the and in our case, departments, because we Rich has built it up to where we have multiple departments within his Amazon business. And in doing so, like I even spend, you know, four to eight hours a week sometimes in the warehouse helping bag products and ship products out. So I have more of an appreciation for everything that we do. Yeah. That's how big is the team now? I haven't heard a number lately. Oof, we're double digits. So I think yeah. 10 or so. We have two virtual assistants. Yeah. Um, and so we're we're growing, you know, every every few months, it feels like we're just adding another person. Yeah. And I've heard that uh, those virtual assistants, they do a lot of the wholesale research, the mm-hmm. uh, proven wholesale sourcing course, proven wholesale sourcing.com, right? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going through that right now with the hundreds of our students. And uh, I guess you're going to be doing some of those sessions too, right? We haven't recorded it. Now, by the time people hear this, maybe it's all been recorded, but the people going through the live experience, you're going to be one of the teachers, I understand. Richard. Yeah. So I've, I've already participated in helping I think on week two, I helped out with Rich a little bit. And then our next two weeks, um, I, I'm going to participate a little bit within each call. Gotcha. So from your perspective, this, you know, you understand replens, right? You've, you've seen that part of the business. You've sourced replens. You know what a good one looks like. And can compare that then with, with your perspective on a wholesale replen. Like talk through those two. I always like to hear people kind of describe the business from their own vantage point. 
if you were explaining to me, and let's say I kind of know what it means to sell on Amazon, but like replan, what is that? And wholesale replan, how's that different? Talk us through that a little bit. Okay. So kind of like even take a step back. I know when I first started working with Rich, it was we solely only had wholesale accounts. It was a few, but we had a select few wholesale accounts that I was helping prep and ship out. And then we were introduced to, to Jimmy's program um, of replants, you know, right before COVID, all that kind of stuff. And we really dived into learning what a replenishable item was, um, replenishable arbitrage. And it kind of changed my mindset ever so slightly where wholesale, I thought about, okay, we just buy a large bulk of, you know, the same six items from these brands and we sell them as singles or we sell them as exactly how we get them. Um, but I think in learning what replans are, you know, we go out to our local grocery stores, we go out to our local, our family dollar trees and such. And we see all of these, these different varieties of products. Um, it opens my mind up to all the possibilities of all the things that we can sell. It could be a bundle. It could be all these two, th- two packs, these three packs. And so that changed the whole way that we started sourcing to where now, even with wholesale accounts that we get, we use the same kind of methodology of sourcing those products. If I find a product that sells really well as a single, what's to say it's going to sell just as good, if not better as a two pack, a three pack or a bundle. And so that's how I see it as a replan that there's more than one opportunity just to sell it as is. You go to your local Walmart or to your Dollar Tree and you see a product that sells for you know $1 and we can sell it the same thing on Amazon for a few dollars more. But what's to say I can, I can bundle some items. I can send it as two, three packs. And so it's really changed the way I think completely. So do you guys create new listings for some of these new multi-packs and bundles? You're creating a lot of your own new listings, aren't you? We have created, yes. Uh, we actually, I know more recently too, really dived into that um, subject of creating our own listings, especially for unique bundle ideas. If it be you know, a specific product that we see that sells well as on its own, but we see that it could probably sell well with something else, but make it more unique to us as a seller. And we see that as a great opportunity for us to, to really drive sales. Are, are you guys brand registered yet? Do you know what yes. you are? Okay. Are. So yes. you guys have built a brand. How much of your, how many of your ASINs, what percentage of the products you sell are under that brand versus selling other people's stuff? It's, it's, pretty, sl- it's pretty slim. I would say a couple dozen different ASINs that we have under our own brand um, in comparison to the, the thousands of other ASINs that we have. Sure. Sure. But are you seeing some momentum there? Because that's a conversation that's getting more exciting in our community. We've got the, this, if I can remember the name of it, provenbrandbuilding.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a new, it's going to be free for all of our students, coaching students, proven Amazon course students. They all get that course for free. But this something sounds like you guys are starting to step into that a little bit. Yeah. Talk us through that process. You seeing some momentum there? Are you tracking those numbers? Is that part yeah, of we are? Yeah. Um, it's right off the get go. Um, there was one specific product, for example, that we were hesitant on um, just because the same you know, idea of this is a great selling product on its own. What if we add something to it and make it unique to ourselves, but it still adds the same value as it did as, as a single? Mm-hmm. Um, we tested you know, five or six out of this one specific product and it was gone just like that. Sold just like that. So we're like, okay, this, this has some potential um, to where now we just sent in 100, 100 of the same product. Um, just in Amazon, just so we can keep that momentum going. No, no, without creating competitors for yourself, talk me through what's in that. None of these are products you went out and private label created or had made on your own. These are fairly easily sourced, I'm guessing, either wholesale or replan type products. And you just created a bundle out of existing hot products, correct? Yeah. No, actually, to make it even... We started actually... The product that we initially started with was kind of replan based. Um, it's something that you could get at your local grocery store. Mm-hmm. And then we added just a unique... Um, product with it to make it more of a bundle. And then it is a food-based product. So we added kind of our own recipe card with our own brand kind of registered on that card. And so that, you know, the customer gets it, they can be like, oh, I have a pre-made recipe for this specific product. And so it's really just added a little bit more value to us as a brand, but also the seller sees it as a valuable product. And, And what we're seeing is, you know, if that's under your brand registry, you're very protected. Anyone can do this. You don't have to be brand registered to put a recipe card in there. But 
somebody could copy you and Amazon's not going to quite have your back in the same way is what we're kind of seeing. It, if, it, if it does really well, people are going to try to figure out a way to hop on that listing. And with brand registry, you've kind of got that extra layer of protection. That's what the proven, provenbrandbuilding.com course is going to be about creating these protected bundles, these branded bundles that have your umbrella. So with just a few dozen listings compared to the thousands of other listings you have, you're getting pretty excited, it sounds like to me. And I, I hadn't talked to Rich about this at all. I didn't realize you guys were even diving into this territory. It seems like anytime we roll out a new idea, Rich takes the ball and runs with it and gets back to me in three months and teaches us things we didn't know. That's just kind of how he rolls. But it sounds pretty exciting. So you sent in recently 100 units of this new bundle, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've only had that bundle up for you know a month or so now, um, but you know we've we've increased our, our our number that we send in. You know it might have been five at first. Okay, let's send in ten or fifteen or so. Mm-hmm. And when those came in, those were sold out within a week. We're like, okay, let's try to stock for two months. Let's send in a hundred. And you created a new listing for this one. Mm-hmm. It was our own okay. unique listing. Yeah. Do you happen to know offhand approximately what your margin is on this one? Like what what's your buy cost and what's it selling for? What how are you doing with it? I do know that I don't know numbers in regards to buy cost but i do know that our margins for these these kind of like private label bundles we're trying to shoot for closer to a 30 percent profit margin with you know 60 or 70 roi and so nice. have really good margins and it's going to be yeah. great just to, to build upon that yeah fantastic so who's in charge of kind of building those out on your team so we all kind of participate with you know ideas because we we believe that everyone here has you know their own unique mindset and so we have designated that into our, our shopper, um, which is, is Brad. And he is really just taking the ball and rolled it. And he is fantastic. He'll, he'll come back with you know a half dozen new ideas every week on, hey, what do you guys think about this, this, and this? And we're just like, okay, let's do half those. Do you ever dive in and look at, uh, besides the brainstorming strategy, which is phenomenal, hey, this stuff's selling well, let's make some bundles out of it. Mm-hmm. Do you ever dive in and look at the uh, the Amazon reports, this, the number of seller, the number of sessions, I should say? Um, you know what I'm talking about? I can't remember exactly offhand what it's called, but you can get in and see the number of sessions and eyeballs, basically, okay. that have seen your different listings. Do you ever look at those those reports? I, I haven't recently. What's getting I, attention? I've been on that. I I think I can navigate my way to find it. But yeah, it's it's just, it's in under business reports. I'm just curious because that's another brainstorming, and it's for you guys and for everyone else too. I, it's been a while since I looked at it for my own account, even. But uh, you can get in and see which of those products are really getting a lot of attention and eyeballs, and they may not necessarily be the ones that are getting the most sales, but they're getting a lot of eyeballs, True. which tells you. Wow, you know, this listing is getting 3,000 views a day. Now there's 30 other sellers on it, which is why we're only selling a few a month. But wow, that's a lot of eyeballs. Yeah. So maybe there's a bundle opportunity there. Just as a little tip for you, look at the number of sessions, uh-huh. visitor sessions, and, and there may be something that jumps off the screen at you guys. Get back to me. Let me know if you find some gold there. Sure, yeah. uh, but that's for the listeners too. It's something we need to do on our own account. And I love that you're building out some of your own listings. Typically, a lot of our replin sellers just don't. You know, like even Jimmy, as far as I know, I don't think they've ever added a new listing to Amazon. They just go find stuff that's selling well and and source it. Uh, But more and more, a way to distinguish your business, I think, is what you're talking about. Get into some of these higher margin bundles and you own it. Either through a simple strategy like a recipe card or brand registry, that sort of thing. So what else have you learned around here, man? Give us give us some tips or strategies. I know you teach some of the courses. When people come out there, we'll stick a link in the show notes to the, the live session that you guys do, the, the four-day session where they see the warehouse, see the products, see the whole process, mm-hmm. uh, go out there to Phoenix and hang out with you guys. Take, take us through some of maybe the golden nuggets from, uh, from that experience. Yeah, no. So I mean, I've been blessed by Rich to be a participant in a lot of our our trainings here. Um, You know, it's that four day training or so. Um, I'll sit in every day. I'll I'll participate as if I was a student, you know, adding my own input and such. Um, But I've also been able to to teach specific sections that, you know, Rich is very confident that I've I've mastered. Um, It's something I'm always trying to improve. Um, A lot of those things range from me specifically doing wholesale sourcing. Um, finding specific brands or distributors to contact, and then breaking those price lists, those websites down and doing my kind of our our reverse sourcing is what we call it, where we kind of use that mindset of 
looking at replens and looking at those bundles, looking at those uh, multi-packs. And so I teach a lot about that. We teach about how to, to scan through price list. And then my most, I guess, proud thing that we teach is we, I talk about virtual assistants. That's something that Rich has entrusted with me is I'm in charge of our virtual assistants. Um, 20, pretty much that five days a week or so, I'm always messaging them, giving them assignments. I'm always checking their work um, and then going from there. And it's something that I never had experience in prior. Um, uh, I didn't really know what a VA was at first until, you know, Rich posed the idea to me. It was like, hey, we want to hire our, our first virtual assistant, you know, almost two years ago. And he did the initial training for that virtual assistant. And then he handed them off to me and where I've trained our second virtual assistant. I've helped train a few of our, our friends' virtual assistants. And it's been a, a great learning experience for me, but I feel like I've learned a lot of things. You know, first thing is my my uh, my people skills, my talking skills. I feel like I can communicate a lot better than I used to prior to, you know, all of my, my life. Um, I never graduated from college. Um, I'm a high school graduate. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank Smart you. move, not going to college, in my opinion. <laughs> I, I agree because I feel like I've learned far more here than I feel like I could have paid some sort of some sort of education to pay to teach yeah. me. Yeah. Um, Real world education. Exactly. Um, I've where Rich is very, you know, entrepreneur mindset um, with you know his Amazon business, his his event businesses, him into real estate and stuff like that too, where it's changed the way I think where I don't necessarily want to start my own Amazon business, not because I don't think there's potential there because I love working for Rich. Um, yeah. It's a great opportunity, but I also have other ideas of which I would like to start other businesses myself. And so it's been a real big eye opener for me, that potential that we as humans can have by really just thinking outside the box. Yeah, that's right. That taking that entrepreneurial spirit and I, I know Rich has multiple things he's into and always looking to free himself up and surround himself with great people as we see with you, Richard, like, you know, you surround yourself with competent people who care and capture the vision. You can do some pretty incredible things. Pardon the brief interruption. We'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I want to tell you about our latest sponsor, Celix.com. By the time you finish listening to this episode, a new competitor could have come on the scene and start selling on Amazon. How are you going to beat them? Well, having a great product may not be enough anymore. You need a great pay-per-click campaign as well. That's what Celix does, PPC analysis. That's why Celix has teamed up with leading global pay-per-click experts to create the best Amazon PPC evaluation tool in the industry. And it's available for free to listeners of this show if you go to Celix.com slash silent sales. That's Celix, S-E-L-L-I-C-S dot com slash silent sales. This evaluation tool is built on aggregated and anonymized Amazon PPC data representing over two and a half billion dollars in ad spend across 170,000 products. It's been tested a lot. Every month, you'll get an email that breaks down your advertising performance, compares it to the competition in your category, and shows you the exact changes you should make in order to improve any underperforming ASINs. This will help lower your ad spend. Plus, all listeners of this show who use the tool also qualify for a free bonus call with an expert, a PPC expert. That's a $400 value. So get your campaigns evaluated. Claim your call today for free by visiting sellix.com slash silent sales. That's S-E-L-L-I-C-S dot com slash silent sales. Let's get back to the show. You know, you surround yourself with competent people who care and capture the vision. You can do some pretty incredible things. I, I want to go back and revisit um, one of the things you just said that you focus on when you're when you're teaching the class. Um, you listed through a few things that you talk about. And go go back to that list again, because one of them jumped out at me and I, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but I, I said, I made a mental note, like, I want to go deeper on that. Okay. What, was it classes do to wholesale sourcing? Right. Um, and how we change our minds or I change my mindset into the way I think, you know, I think of these wholesale accounts in the sense of replens, you know, these are going to be replenishable products and I can really source them not as just a single product, but as, you know, a two pack, a three pack. Uh, different varieties and such. 
Right. The, the, the sessions that you teach, there was another one in there though. I apologize. I should have jotted a note down because I was just enjoying myself listening. But um, there was another strategy that you talked about that you teach. Scanning price list. That's it. Mm-hmm. Boom. Nailed it. Scanning the price list. Because I think some people may not know what that even means. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I love about the replens mindset is it's not about trying to find that next never heard of before, never seen before product. And like, we're going to build a better mousetrap and bring it to the world. Like it's not mm-hmm. that mindset. It's going through a list of products that already exist. And maybe you, you get a new wholesaler and they say, yeah, sure. We'll work with you. Someone your virtual assistant found and they send you the price list and you're looking through 800 new potential products. Like, how do you decide which one you're gonna gonna go with? That's scanning through a, a price list, right? Talk us through that process a little bit. How do you guys make those decisions, and what's what's involved in that process? So, um, at first, you know, we've played around with a different, couple of different price lists, um, a couple of different great ones out there, websites, um, anything from Price Checker Two to Analyzer Tools and such. We currently use Analyzer Tools, um, something that we like. Um, I know we're always looking for the next best thing. Um, but example being, we recently got a price list that from a, a pet distributor that I got the price list and it was updated, but it had 30,000 products on it. Right. Um, and at first glance, like that is very overwhelming. Like I could spend a whole year, it feels like looking through that price list, you know, cause you could be copying UPCs. You could be pulling up the brand directly on amazon.com and just spending hours on end. And so we kind of walk through while we're teaching our students is that, Yes, it might seem overwhelming at first, but it's not as overwhelming as you might think it is. Um, with a lot of these tools or these scanners, they give us options to filter out kind of a lot of the junk. Um, and I teach a lot about prepping a price list, um, familiarizing yourself through the distributor or the brand with maybe restricted like products or brands that you cannot sell on Amazon. And then filter through that price list before you even scan it and get rid of all that junk. Um, this one particular has 30,000. I will ask the distributor. Hey, what what brands am I not allowed to sell on Amazon? They give me a list. That list consisted of ninety thousand or nine thousand products, and so all of a sudden my price list is now twenty thousand products or less. Right. And so it's just narrowing it down until I plug it into my scanner, and the scanner gives you you know the option to if you don't want to look at listings that Amazon competes on, okay, I'll filter filter those out again. Oh, there's another five thousand gone, and so you're slowly trickling it down to where you might only have a few thousand or a few hundred left, you know, let's say your margins are, you want 20% for profit. Okay. Well, let's set maybe a 15% for profit. And I'll look at all of those. It gets rid of all the stuff that's 10% or lower. And so there you go. I have a thousand listings to look at, and then I can kind of jot those down and break it down from that. So that's something that we teach all our students, something I do on a regular basis. That's something that we've also transitioned into uh, teaching our virtual assistants. Um, that they, I will give my virtual assistants an untouched price list and they know how to prep it, how to scan it, how to go through it. And then that specific price list I'm talking about with 30,000 products, our virtual assistants sourced through and found 125. It was a great, you know, add on to our business. And it was a great, it's, it's always been a great supplier since. Now, as a, as a, a final step in that process, once you've got it narrowed down, I'm, I'm assuming the last filter you guys are putting them through is a, a replens type filter, just looking at it from a, you yeah. know, how many can we expect to sell per month based on the drops? Where's our margin at? Uh, you know, because it's one thing to say, well, here's the buy box today. And it's another thing to say, what's it doing over time? You know, where are we heading with this? And then, so you kind of drill down and find the gold. It's like shaking a pan of gold at the creek, right? Or at the, at the stream. And uh, you you get those last few nuggets out. So yeah, I love that process. Yeah, I know it's great. And then we'll transition strictly into kind of a manual sourcing, like you were saying, where we'll look at our keeping charts, we'll look at our, our ref seller, we'll look at all the data that's provided with us and see if it's something we want to move forward with. Yeah, beautiful. Well, you mentioned using virtual assistants. And that's a topic that comes up from time to time on the show. I'm going to drop another resource on everybody. This this has got a bit of a waiting list to it. It's so popular. It's our provenreplensva.com, provenreplensva.com. I'm pretty sure that's it. If that doesn't work, check in the show notes. But it's basically, we're training virtual assistants as fast as we can. And, and actually, uh, your your buddy, Rich Potter there, we're talking as well about starting to train them on how to source wholesale 
source as one of the things. But we're starting to train virtual assistants for people rather than have them go out, find their own virtual assistant, get them trained and up to speed. We're saying, hey, we can do that part for you and turn them loose. But talk us through that process. You know, what do you pay them approximately per hour? If you happen to know, you may not, but uh, just ballpark. And what all duties do they take care of for you guys? How much work are you sending them? Yeah. And, uh, and you said they're the Philippines, right? Yeah. So our, ours are based in the Philippines. Um, actually, both of our VAs are sisters. And so they already have a family relationship. And I know they communicate outside of work um, in regards to what they do. Um, we started paying our virtual assistants at $3 an hour. Um, and it was part-time at first because, once again, I know one of the biggest hiccups that people have is what if I don't hire the right of virtual assistant? Like, what if it doesn't work out? Right. So we, we kind of do like a testing period where we, you know, we had a couple weeks, if not a month or so, where they were only part-time. Um, we were paying the $3 an hour. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a lot out of our pocket, but according to our research and even me talking to our VAs, um, $3 an hour is a pretty nice wage out there. Oh yeah, for sure. And some people get worked up. It's like, Oh, that's ex- exploiting. And we've covered that in plenty of other places, plenty of other times that those $3 spends like about 15 to $20 per hour in the Philippines. That's just the nature of economics and supply and demand. And, and, uh, I always say I don't discriminate based on where people live when I hire people. I make sure I pay them well for a job well done. And they, you know, we give nice bonuses to people in the Philippines if they do a great job for us. But sometimes you're kind of filtering through a few people that don't quite work out too. But man, finding the right person and getting them trained. So I'd say they're probably worth the investment. Do they get paid a little bit more than that now? Where are they at yeah, now? We, we bump them up to about $4 an hour and then they do get the occasional bonus. Um, yeah. And it's actually so nice. Our seasoned VA who's been with us for a year plus now, uh, mm-hmm. she actually helps train other VAs. Um, she can exactly. learn native language. She's, she knows what she does well. We got very lucky. Um, and so we, we give them a lot of different assignments. Um, kind of their main assignments are they spend, you know, 10 hours a week um, solely based on contacting new suppliers. And that could be going through wholesale, distribution, and such contacting new suppliers, setting up potentially setting up accounts. They have preset templates that they will email out, um, as well as they will scan price lists. They will source products. They do a lot of kind of the replan methodology of sourcing, where we're kind of looking at the data within Keepa, the data within RevSeller, looking historically what the product's been like. You know, if it might just be the buy box has been selling really good for a week, but historically it's been kind of low. We don't want to really risk our money on that. So they do a great job at that for the most part too. That's tremendous. Yeah, I know we're using a couple of virtual assistants on our team. And at first we just turned them loose and trained them on how to find replens. And they were finding so many so fast, our shoppers can't keep up. That's become the bottleneck now. It's like, we just can't get the shoppers into the stores fast enough to find this stuff. And uh, there's just so much low hanging fruit out there. So many different ways to do this business. But hiring virtual assistants is such a low risk, high reward way to bring a great member onto your team. And so much of the work that we do can be done by somebody that's not in the office with us. So I'm I'm glad we planted that seed. I think that's going to help some folks out. And uh, we'll stick a link in the show notes to to the provenreplensva.com service. That's like I said, it's really on fire. I think the waiting list is probably about three to six weeks to get a VA if you get in line. Uh, We're calling people on the phone, making sure it's a good fit before we hook them up. But yeah, and I know uh, I'm excited for Rich to be getting involved with that with this as well, because um, I think it may be even, maybe your VAs will be training our VAs or something. Who knows what we're going to work out to to train them how to find these wholesale opportunities based on the, uh, the smart scout strategies that we've been talking about. Um, And I'll stick a link to that episode in the show notes if there's people who don't know what we're talking about there because Rich and Scott Needham and I went over the strategies recently for using Smart Scout to uncover wholesale opportunities. Is that part of what what you do as well? It sounds like you kind of said it is. Yeah, we use Smart Scout. I'm on Smart Scout probably every day. Um, As well as we trained our virtual assistants to use Smart Scout as well. That's right. right. every, Every great tool we find, we make sure that everyone gets trained on. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And I, I love that, you know, because we've been doing this a while and we've got a large community, I was able to text Scott, the guy who created it, and said, Hey man, give us a great discount for our community and, and hook us up, man. So he did. So uh it's a great I think, software. I think the I can't remember what the link is. I'll stick it in the show notes. I, I think it's silentgym.com slash SS Smart Scout. I think that's it. 
if that's not it, the link's in the show notes for Smart Scout. But you, you'll want to go through that proven wholesale sourcing training, provenwholesalesourcing.com training with Richard and Rich and his that team out there. Now we're capturing the recordings now. How far? We're about halfway through that now, right? Without, yeah. yeah, I think we got about, I think we only have like two or three more sessions. Yeah, today is right. our, our fourth and we have two more sessions after. Right. Right. So that that's winding up. We've captured all those recordings. So you can, if you're, if you're a little late, you can buy it at any point in time, jump in, catch the last couple live. If it's already been recorded, we'll have the recording sessions for you as well. But you guys are doing a great job getting tremendous feedback from that so far. What's that been like for you, you know, being a trainer and stepping into that role? I mean, you really, you've had quite a progression here in a very short period of time. You went from, you know, putting stuff in bags and probably with headphones on, listening to music and just bagging cans of green beans all day to like, okay, now you're making some decisions for the business and growing and, and making more money. Like what's it, what's the reality of this business model for you? Just talk me through it. Like how's it changed your life? I mean, it's changed my life in more ways than I can count. Um, I mean, the friendships I've made first off have been incredible. Um, obviously, you know, I, I, my financial status is, is doing great as well. Um, I've also just, like we said before, I've learned skills that I feel like I couldn't learn anywhere else. And this, these could be skills that have direct relations towards Amazon or selling on Amazon, but also skills that I can take into my everyday life. You know, my work mm-hmm. ethic has, has changed exponentially as well. Mm. Um, and it's just, I think it's really opened the door for me with so many different opportunities um, to, to live my life. Um, you know, it's, it's a little overwhelming sometimes, you know, Rich will go out of town for two weeks. He's like, I'm going to go on vacation. I'm like, he's like, you're in charge. I'm like, okay, let's, let's do it. Um, but it's, you know, I, I actually appreciate him putting me in those, those positions because it really kind of almost forces me to accommodate, to really, to make it work and to, to learn everything I need to know. And so it's something that I might spend, you know, I work 40 hours a week or so. But, you know, 10 of those hours could be me just completely learning new software, learning new things um, and really just enhancing my knowledge um, in my everyday life. So yeah. it's been an awesome opportunity. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great to hear you describe it that way. And, it, you know, it, it, you don't strike me as a guy who's just trying to say the right things because your boss is a guy on our leadership team. And, you know, you really are enjoying yourself. You really are benefiting. And I love that you kind of connected the dots. Like this impacts real life too. You're learning leadership skills. You've got a, a different work ethic. You know what it's like to be part of a team and building something together. Uh, and what I'm hoping kind of accompl- is accomplished from this episode is some of the other people out there who are just kind of like nose to the grindstone, build, 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 work, 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 you know, get up early, work hard all day, go to bed tired. Hey, how about a team? You know, you can actually make more money with a team. And that's something Rich has done instinctually, bringing you on board and, and some other great people because he's had other businesses. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great lesson for us to take home. So what else you got for us as we start to wrap this one up, Richard, anything else on your list that, that you think might be of value to the listeners? You said you've listened to a good handful of these episodes and you've, you've, that's been part of your learning curve. Uh, you know, what do you want to throw out there that you think might benefit folks? I mean, from what I've, I've learned and what I've seen other, you know, people do, um, is, you know, it's, it's hard at first, but as long as we keep trucking, as long as we keep trying, um, I know there's going to be a lot of you know ups and downs, and we're going to fail left and right. But through those failures comes the success, um, and I've totally seen that in people's lives. Um, the impact that you know, even being on, an on, an entrepreneur, but also just you know having an Amazon account um, and doing all these things, it's it's really impacted people's lives. I can see people being happy. I've become more happier myself. I just recently got married, and so it's no been a- way. Congratulations, young man. That's awesome. So uh, wait, how long ago was that? Uh, a little over a month ago. Oh, you're still clueless, man. <laughs> just, just messing with you. That's great. Congratulations. I didn't realize. So it's been an awesome opportunity. I just, the only advice I'd have is just work hard and, and try your best. And I think that's all we can do really. Man, that's awesome. And it's been a pleasure getting to know you. This is really cool. I think folks are going to really enjoy this episode. And hopefully one of the big tech- takeaways I want to drive home is there's Richards out there. If you're doing this business and uh, you don't have to wait till you got a million dollar business or even, you know, 30,000 a month or whatever it is you're going for, start thinking about it now. Maybe it starts with a virtual assistant. Maybe it starts with someone you run into at the reception desk at the gym who has a good attitude. Yeah. Maybe that's a good question, Richard. What, what was it that made it, did, 
has Rich ever told you why you and not the guy who was next to you, you know, scanning barcodes as people came in? Like, was there something there? I've never actually asked him that. Um, yeah. I would assume it's because my you know, my charming personality. But yeah, of course. <laughs> I'd be completely wrong. Um, but I don't know if it's something he saw in me as a person. You know, I'm I was just working, you know, what felt like dead end jobs. And, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm working hard and stuff. But um, I think I'm just grateful to be given the opportunity. Yeah. W- would you consider yourself someone with a, a, a good attitude, like when you were in that environment versus say, you know, if they lined up all the 10 people that worked there, where would you rank on the attitude scale? If you, if you have the ability to be honest with yourself, like, is that something that maybe stood out? I'm just curious. Yeah, Self, I mean, self-evaluate a little bit. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't hold grudges towards anybody. So whatever job I'm at, whatever atmosphere I'm at, I'll be your best friend. Um, I don't care what you came from background wise. I don't care what you're doing now. Um, I'll be your best friend. I will find a way to you know, kind of involve myself with you. And so, you know, that could be it. That's just me in general. I'm just yep. sometimes a too nice of a guy. Um, and my wife tells me that now. And so <laughs> something that I need to maybe not work on a little bit if I can, but I just, I'm always upbeat. My goal is just to be happy 24 seven. And if there's something that in my life that seems to be a little corrupt or I'm not happy with my life, I'll make the change. You work on it. Yep. Yeah. You, 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 you know, if people stand out very quickly when you're looking for people to hire and maybe grow your business and a, a story that pops in my head. I don't know if I've shared it on the podcast before or not. I think I've shared it when I've presented, but uh, there was a guy who owned a gas station in, and this is like in the fifties, I think 50s, sixties. And, and he only hired young men. They had to come perfectly dressed, perfect white shirt. I think they wore black ties. It was, they had to be super clean. And, and they, that's back when they pumped the gas, right? Which is wow. like way before any of us were driving cars here. But, uh, and they were paid. It was one of the lowest paying jobs in town. But people lined up to work there. And the reason was they couldn't wait to work there. With, when they started, he told them like, here's the rules. You're going to be super clean, no profanity. You're going to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. You're going to work your tail off and you're not going to get paid a whole lot. But people are going to notice people with nice cars come to our gas station because we got the best prices in town because I don't pay you guys much and they're going to hire you. If you have a good attitude, you won't be here more than three to six months. They're going to hire you and then you'll be off doing something, working at the golf course, making twice as much money or whatever, right? So I I love that story of, you know, even if you're in a position where you're not too excited, there's opportunity there. There's relationships, those people you're meeting, those, you know, encounters you have, your attitude really matters. And I, I think maybe you're an example. My theory is if we, if we brought Rich into the room right now and said, hey, and what, what stood out? I bet attitude has a big, has a big piece of it. Because people with a good attitude in a less than perfect environment, you know, like that wasn't your career to work the reception at a gym the rest of your life, right? Like, you know, and everyone knows that's not where you want to be 20 years from now. Uh, but that attitude, if you have a good one there, it really stands out. So look for those people. Maybe those make good people to hire. I've had conversations with people at retail stores, for example, and, and ended up having conversations with them about coming onto our team because they had a great attitude. That goes a long way. So you've definitely got that, man. That's beautiful. It. And starting a family, that's awesome. That's cool. cool. It's great getting to know you a little bit, man. Thank Anything you. else on your mind before we before we wind down? Anything else you want to throw out there to listeners? It's fine if not, but I just didn't want to end it before you had the chance. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been an honor. Um, I've wanted to meet you myself, so it's been it's been great. I just hear great things from Rich, like, oh, dude, Jim Cockrum said this, 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 and I watched some of your podcasts and such. So it's just a great opportunity. No, oh, that's cool. Rich says nice things about me, huh? All right. <laughs> nice things, yeah. Well, I say a lot of cool things about him for sure because he is definitely impressed a whole bunch of people around here. And uh, he's just a wealth of knowledge and creativity. And it's an honor to get to work with him. It's a pretty incredible. I, you know, I call it our team. You know, there's very few people that actually work for me, but we're all doing projects together and, and involved in, uh, you know, educating this community, learning and growing together. So yeah, that's great. It's, it's an honor. It, you know, the, the only other thing that makes me stand out around here is how long I've been doing it. So you do it long enough and you make friends along the way and, you end up being the guy with the podcast, I guess. But yep. uh, it truly is an honor getting to know you as well, my friend. And, and so uh, can't wait to get out there, man. Sit in one of those one of those training sessions and hang yeah, out with you guys. Awesome to have you out. Yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah, come see you. Probably not in the summer though, because I guess you guys get baked in the summer. <laughs> it's pretty terrible sometimes. But, well, hey, good hanging out with you, man. I'll talk to the listeners for a minute. And we'll wrap this one up. 
this was a great episode. Maybe uh, you're interested in hearing more of these kind of things. Let us know what you think. Send us your feedback. This is a great peek behind the curtain, I think, to the kind of people that are behind the great leaders that you kind of see and hear from all the time, their teams, the people that are supporting them. And uh, you know what? I'm actually, it uh, reminds me, I've been talking to Mary. She's been with our customer support team for a very long time. We said, hey, we should do a podcast episode. She agreed to it. And we haven't done it yet. So maybe I'll do that too. If you guys liked this one, we'll get her. She's been with us for well over a decade at this point. But, but all the business building warriors out there who hung out with us today, thanks for loaning us some of your time. God bless you. We're in your corner. We're rooting for you. We're here for you. If you weren't aware, we have a Facebook community with about 67,000 people in it all over the world, building businesses online creatively. Come join us. Jump in. I think you'll love being a part of it. But we'll wrap up here. We'll have another great episode again real soon. Thanks to our special special guest today, Richard Clough. It was great hanging out with you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, And uh, we'll talk to the rest of y'all real soon. Hey, before I let you go, one last reminder about Sellix.com, S-E-L-L-I-C-S.com. They can help you analyze your pay-per-click campaigns for free with their market-leading Amazon PPC evaluation tool. Get started now by visiting Sellix.com slash silent sales. After you submit your request, you'll receive a monthly email that shows you the exact changes you should be making to achieve a lower average cost per sale spend on your ads. Plus, I want to remind you that all listeners today receive an optional bonus call with a Celix pay-per-click expert to discuss your campaigns. That's a $400 value. So start evaluating your campaigns now for free by visiting Celix.com slash silent sales. Hey, we'll see you next time.